through the hallways of academia and on the face of the moon the footprints of conquest haven't left us any room to say Greetings and welcome to the third edition of Women's Liberation Radio News. WLRN produces a monthly radio broadcast to break the sound barrier women are blocked by under the status quo rule of men. This blocking of women's discourse and ideas we see in all sectors of society, be they conservative, liberal, mainstream, progressive, or radical. The thread that runs through all of American politics and tie it all together is male dominance and entitlement in all spheres. My name is Shanti Hosey, and I sit on the board of directors of WIF, Women's Liberation Front. Today's program focuses on trans politics and youth culture. We will hear from Sarah Barr Frost, a college student who was told by her professor she had to take her women's studies course at home and not attend lectures due to quote unquote transphobia. At the end of the program, we will explore the terms and narratives used to describe both trans and feminist politics in an interview with Katina Hyman, IT analyst from San Diego, California. And hi, I'm Thistle Pedersen based out of Madison, Wisconsin. I wanted to give a shout out of appreciation to Celine Michaels for the WLRN logo design that you can now see on the WLRN Facebook page, Twitter account, and also the WLRN website. Thank you, Celine. It's beautiful. We love it. We hope to make coffee mugs and t-shirts with your local design in the future. And hi, I'm Tasha Rose, sitting in for Elizabeth McEwen this month. I have a master's in English literature from St. Catherine University, and I'm the director of Our Dancing Daughters, a teen girl mentoring program in St. Paul, Minnesota. I'm also the mother of six beautiful children and live a radical life in St. Paul in a family of eight. Here are today's headlines and news for July 7, 2016. called Women Speak Out took place in Tacoma, Washington on the University of Washington's campus on June 16th. The speakers that included Miriam Ben Shalom, Maya Dillard Smith, and Blair Tyndall faced the insults and threats of an unruly audience as the women tried to engage in civil discussion. In Minnesota last week, President Obama honored the Minnesota Lynx for the third time in five years. The new NBA champions finished their undefeated season after edging out the Los Angeles Sparks 72 to 69. In other sports news, legendary University of Tennessee will, women's volunteers basketball coach Pat Summit died early morning June 28th at the age of 64. In Pakistan, clerics have legalized transgender marriage. 
the law grants trans- transgender people full marriage, inheritance, and funeral rights under Islamic law. Gay marriage in Pakistan, however, remains illegal with life imprisonment. Amnesty International last week voted in Dublin to decriminalize sex work to the anger of many women's rights groups the world over. The Supreme Court of the United States made a large move last week when they banned domestic abusers from owning firearms in a, in a 6-2 to two decision. Those committing reckless domestic violence and abuse face misdemeanor charges and now ownership restrictions. Another Supreme Court ruling has angered many anti-choice voices in Texas as they reaffirmed and strengthened constitutional protections for abortion rights. In a 5-3 to three decision, they struck down parts of a restricted Texas law that would have significantly reduced the number of abortion providers in the state. And finally, a story that leads us into the topic of today's podcast. Trans politics has taken a hold in youth culture across America and throughout the world. What does this mean for today's youth growing up in a society that embraces and even creates legal protections for gender identity, overriding the protections for girls and women based on sex? WLRN set out to explore the impacts of genderist culture on youth who are speaking in favor of it, and also those who are speaking out against it. We did a simple YouTube search with the keywords young trans, and hundreds of videos came up featuring young people talking about their hairstyles, their clothing choices, and their desire to be loved and accepted as trans. One young woman tells the BBC that she was, quote, always attracted to girls, even before she became trans but that she always knew she was a straight male. What is this sort of identity politics doing to today's youth? Is it beneficial to girls and women, especially lesbians, for more and more to identify as straight males? When enough young girls identify as trans men, what sort of long-term impact will that have on lesbian culture? We turned to two lesbian youth speaking out about trans politics and what it is doing to their generation. Max Robinson is a 20-year-old lesbian who used to be a trans man until she started noticing that trans ideology serves the interest of males and is heteronormative. She writes on the Fourth Wave Now blog, quote, we genuinely believe some off-the-wall garbage, like that it's wrong and evil, not to be attracted to penises because of, quote, internalized dissexism. We have been successfully brainwashed to serve males at the expense of our own health and sanity. Sarah Barr Frost is another young lesbian who is speaking out against the misogyny inherent in trans politics. Later on in today's program, you will hear excerpts from a phone interview Thistle Pedersen did with Ms. Frost about her story of coming to terms with trans politics and youth culture. We're all just cells when you get down to the heart of it If you break it down from the end right through the start of it We're all just one big cluster, you best believe it, buster Yes, we're all just cells Your penis is just cells, your brain is just cells too So it doesn't really matter what you call yourself or do So you can call yourself a lady, though you still got a dick You know it's all just cells so it can be a lady stick And we're all just cells when you get down to the heart of it You break it down from the end right through the start of it We're all just one big cluster, you best believe it buster Yes we're all just cells 
And if you've got two working legs and you'd rather they not work They're just cells, just call them broken and deny that you're a jerk Just tell them you're rape and kill them if women disagree Cause there's a competition, you will be the best lady Because we're all just cells When you get down to the heart of it, if you break it down From the end right to the start of it We're all just one big cluster, you best believe it, buster Yes, we're all just cells so wave your penis proudly, call it positively female You're a proper modern woman, you're a lady, not a she-male Put your high heel shoes on, cause that's what ladies do And tell your brother Brian, he can be a lady too Because we're all just cells When you get down to the heart of it, if you break it down From the end right to the start of it We're all just one big cluster You best believe it, buster, yes, we're all just cells and if you're feeling sad because your period won't come Just buy a super tampon and shove it up your bum And if you need to change it or need to do a poo Don't forget to check which door takes you to the ladies' loo Because we're all just cells when you get down to the heart of it If you break it down from the end right to the start of it We're all just one big cluster, you best believe it, buster Yes, we're all just cells I was born this way, it's biological, I've got a lady brain, you see, and so it's logical that I should be in charge of setting women free, and by women I don't mean women, I mean ladies just like me, because we're all just cells, when you get down to the heart of it, if you break it down, from the end right through the start of it, we're all just one big cluster, you best believe it, buster, yes, we're all just cells. And you can call yourself a sister and deny that you're a mister Yes, it's all just cells You know it's really not surprising they're so good at minstrelizing Cause it's all just cells, apparently It's all just cells And that was Allie B of AllieBmusic.com and her song Just Cells we will now hear an excerpt from the interview Thistle Peterson did with Sarah Bar Frost, a college student who lives on the West Coast with her girlfriend and her cat, Rox. Sarah spent a lot of time during her first couple of years in college advocating for the admission of men to her women's college, Smith, on the grounds that they identified as women. Since hitting peak trans, during her junior year, she has worked extensively on developing a healthy skepticism for political ideologies and on creating real sisterhood with actual women. She hopes to pursue a career in law, particularly focusing on sex discrimination. The excerpt begins with Sarah telling the story of how she was told by her professor that the only way she could stay in the women's study course she was enrolled in was to take it at home, quote unquote, and not be in the classroom with the students who felt unsafe in her presence. The trans women, quote unquote, students complained to the professor of feeling unsafe because Sarah raised her hand on the second day of class and made reference to how the uterus is a key importance to female experience. The full length extended interview can be found on WLRN's website under the interview tab. Quickly, what happened to me was that um, I signed up for a class that was based around a book by Sylvia Federici called Caliban and the Witch, and it's a historical, uh, critical Marxist look at the witch hunts of women in Europe. So we're going through this book, and I'm really liking the class. We get to about the second day, and someone points out that Federici does not include trans women in this analysis, and that Federici refers to the female body and that Federici says that uteruses are female organs. And they're very upset about this. And I raise my hand and say, uh, because we're all going through our paper topics, so this person is going to be writing about how awful the book is and how exclusive it is. And I, I, I raised my hand and I said, well, maybe I can write about why the uterus is important to female experience. And so I get an email that day from my professor saying the subject is a spot of drama. So that kind of tells you where her, um, you know, that it's it, it's all about uh, 
people's feelings and not necessarily about a classroom learning environment. So she says, um, basically, people are really upset with what you said in class today. I, I can forward you this email stream. It's kind of too too crazy to believe. But she eventually tells me, look, the trans women in your class feel unsafe when you question gender identity. And she said to me, I'll never forget, the, the idea that trans women are women is not up for debate. Right. And this is the senior women's studies professor at my university. Um, and in many ways, I guess I wasn't surprised because she's a queer studies Foucault scholar. But I guess I was surprised that it was just stated so blatantly that I couldn't debate or question that idea. And in writing. Yes, in writing. And so eventually she just asked me to take the class from home because she said that if I couldn't basically shut up, not that she said it that way, but if I couldn't stop questioning the gender identity stuff, even though our our, our book was supposed to be about female experience, if I couldn't, you know, basically stop doing that, that I should just take it from home. So I paid the regular fee to not go to any lectures or any discussions and to just send in my papers. And at the end of the class, we had to write a political manifesto. And so I wrote a manifesto about how this this was all very sexist, and I got credit for that. But it, it was really frustrating to, to not be able to take the class because I was so interested in the course. And I was willing to, to sit there and um, and have them think badly of, of me. I've, I've gotten more of a thick skin, so I was willing to do that. But it was uh, shocking that, that I was asked to leave, I guess, yeah. So my um, my biggest advice to women my age, besides, you know, before you get in any type of group, investigate for yourself, question it, don't let men, no matter what they identify as, tell you what to think. Don't let anyone tell you what to think. But also, I would say, here's some other advice, is that is to get offline as much as possible, talk to people who you disagree with as much as possible, and to form sisterhoods as much as possible, especially with women who you might not from the outset agree with on politics. I found that a lot of my growth as a person and some of my best friendships are really with women who, you know, at first I thought were terse. <laughs> and things like that. Um, so I would really encourage, you know, use the Internet to make groups and then go meet in person and then go do real activism. Um, don't get stuck in these insular, safe space type uh, liberal communities. I think in general, feminist activism, you know, needs to be kind of freed from all of that. Um, so, yeah, I guess just for women to stay strong and to realize that, you know, you know your truth, you, you know, you know you're not a horrible bigot. And to just have the, uh, even though it's so hard the way we're raised, to just have the confidence to assert your own beliefs and, and debate them and uh, be open to new ideas. Because I think that's what being college should be about. Um, and I, I do think I, you know, wasted a lot of time um, trying to press my, my ideology onto others, even though I thought it was like for the greater good, instead of listening to all the, you know, amazing women with different opinions and all of that. Um, so I guess for me, it's really about having the guts to speak your truth, but also to be open to new ideas. That's really crucial. And I think that's very undervalued right now in campus activism in general. So Thank you, Sarah Bar Fraz, for a wonderful conversation. What grade did you get in that class that you had to take off campus? I got a great grade. I think in some ways they might have been trying to cover cover themselves because I think they knew that if I, you know, failed this, I mean, I think right. by the college policy, I should have failed for not going to the lectures, right? But I right. got a good grade. So they gave you, uh, I, I'm definitely uncomfortable with that. And uh, I've been talking to um, the administration at the school about all of this, about all of the turf hunt stuff and letting them know that that was unacceptable. And, so hopefully and you've got something, a small some change will happen. of women who you're working with, you said, I think mm -hmm. six. Yeah, around uh, six of us more every day. So speak out, speak over, speak under, speak through the noise. Speak loud so I can hear you. I want to know you. I want to hear your real voice. I want to hear your real voice. Your real
To conclude today's program focused on trans politics and youth in our society, we have WLRN's Shantae Holsey interviewing Katina Hyman, Boston University graduate and IT analyst living and working in San Diego, California. Katina is African-American lesbian and the mother of a teenage son facing the shifts and struggles in our society regarding gender ideology. Shantae began the interview by asking her to tell WLRN listeners why she would like to speak about trans politics and youth. I was born and raised in Philly. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself, uh, I moved out to California in the mid-90s after joining the military. I met the love of my life out here. I got married and went on to pursue my BA in Black Studies and my MA in IT. I wanted to speak about trans politics related to transitioning of kids because it's really heavily in the media today. And I think these kids are being affected um, by what they're seeing, um, a lot of the messaging that's going out there. Um, I also wanted to try to give a little human perspective about these, how these issues affect women like me. I mean, I've seen data suggesting that a lion's share of kids who express gender confusion in their younger years don't continue to have these feelings past adolescence. Plus, a lot of kids that don't persist in their gender dysphoria later come to realize that they're in fact homosexual or bisexual. The problem I have is that instead of encouraging questioning kids to take a more conservative wait-and-see approach, kids and their parents are being told by trans advocates, doctors, and even politicians that they have to identify with a gender role as soon as possible, or else there could be harm. And thinking back to myself growing up in the 80s and 90s, I guess you could have considered me your typical tomboy. As a young girl, sex roles and their rules were pretty oppressive. I don't really think I was alone in this thinking, but coming to terms with my lesbianism as I came into young adulthood pretty much meant a rejection of most of society's assumptions and expectations, but specifically those related to gender and sex roles. So for me as a young woman, gender roles and those who enforced them were just overseers, setting the standards of how I as a woman should behave, who I should be attracted to, how I should dress, even what time I should be in at night. So I and many other young lesbian women of my era rejected them. Things seem different today. I'm pretty sure if I were growing up in today's social and political climate, I would have been convinced that I must be trans too, which couldn't be further from my truth. As a lesbian and as a black woman, I'll probably never conform to society's gender roles or expectations. So I'm here to advocate for a world where gender plays no part in our lives. For me, society's ideals about gender and their roles have always been something to be critical of and not embraced. It's been great to connect with other women like you, Shante, and the women of WLRN who share this perspective. Oh, great. Uh, thank you, and it's, it's an honor to work with other women as well. Um, it's just it's just so good that we can we can just kind of get together and and share our stories. Um, yeah. How do we shift the narrative so that girls and women are not attacked by trans activists and advocates? Hmm, that's a good one. I think radical feminists get a really bad rap. When we speak on a lot of issues, we get villainized as man haters or shamed as out of touch or uptight. But let's be honest, most of that criticism, whether it's from the left or the right, is just misogyny. Mm -hmm. The unintended side effect of this is that people get the impression that we're somehow male-like and unworthy of defense. We're not invincible, and we do have emotional and physical vulnerabilities. I'm of the view that we shouldn't shy away from exposing those vulnerabilities at times in order to not only connect with each other, but to make a more nuanced argument as to how these systems of gender have a very real negative impact on our lives. Next question. What is peak trans and how did you reach it? <laughs> I say I hit peak trans when I began to see how the gender identity craze was starting to hurt kids, including my own. I think the moment was actually one day after telling a gay male friend that my son was sweet and caring and didn't really get into the hookup culture. So that opened him up to bullying at school. Mm -hmm. This guy turns to me and and says, my son is probably trans. I kid you not, just based on that little bit of information. I thought that was the silliest thing I'd ever heard. And that's kind of the moment when I realized that this ideology was not just harmful to trans-identified kids, but to anyone who doesn't live up to society's silly expectations of gender. Wow, that's terrible. You can't do, it's not like you can be a strong woman 
or a sensitive man. You have to be some kind of a weird, special snowflake type of thing. Exactly. Wow. What are some resources online you like to refer women to to help them grow in their understanding of gender politics and youth? I got started reading a lot of radical lesbian feminist foundational texts, um, specifically Sheila Jeffries' Lesbian Heresy and Gender Hurts um, was a good intro to a lot of the um, perspectives as related to uh, gender identity and lesbianism. Audre Lord is also a really good resource for some intersectional perspectives. I spend a lot of time on social media accounts like um, a WLR and Facebook, of course. Uh, their website is also a, a great resource. Uh, Feminist Current on Facebook is a really good one, too, so follow that if you're not already. Um, Females Like Us and Actual Dice on Twitter are go-to resources for me, so I'd recommend anyone interested in um, not just um, lesbian identity politics, but also um, feminist theory, as well as um, some of this uh, gender-critical uh, stuff we've been talking about today. I would, I would check out those resources. Thank you so much, Katina, for your time. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Shantae. It's been great. I look forward to uh, hopefully having many future conversations with you. All right. And that concludes our third edition of Women's Liberation Radio News for July 7th, 2016. Thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to get in touch with us to volunteer or comment, please email wlrnewscontact at gmail.com. We are looking for other women to join us in this radio news service and would love to see a copy of your resume and references. Though you need not have experience in radio to apply, we are all volunteer, run member, powered radio, and are happy to work with you at whatever level of experience you have in radio journalism. Thanks again for listening. I am Shantae Hosey your co-host. And I am Thistle Patterson, signing off from this third edition of WLRN. Be sure to tune in next time on August 4th. We're always interested to hear what you think, so that email address again is wlrnewscontact at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. But how will we find our way out of this? What is the antidote for the patriarchal kiss? How will we find what needs to be shown? And then after that,